When bromoethane and hydroxide get together, a mostly consensual backside attack happens. This is chemistry personified. So bromoethane's just sitting there, minding its own business. Maybe there's some of the most phallic solvent known to man, DMSO, swimming around. Anyways, along comes a hydroxide, and he's one of the most savage attackers this side of the periodic table. You see, he's got an oxygen right here with three big fat lone pairs on it, and all those extra electrons give this oxygen an overall negative charge. Oxygen is not happy with this charge and would love to stick its lone pair way up into the orbital of some other atom. You know, to make a bond. But there's a problem. All of the atoms on the bromoethane have filled octets and don't really want to make any new bonds. So our oxygen atom has to get creative. Upon checking out our bromoethane molecule, hydroxide sees that one of the carbons is bonded to a bromine atom. Bromine is more electronegative than carbon, which means that it pulls the electrons in the bond it has with carbon towards it. This results in a slight negative charge on the bromine and a slight positive charge on the carbon. Also, to form the bond between the carbon and the bromine, there must be an antibonding orbital formed as well. This antibonding orbital is special because if electrons are donated to it, the bond between the carbon and the bromine breaks. This slightly positively charged area near the antibond is the perfect place for oxygen to attack with its large lone pair, and is sometimes called the cheeks of the carbon. Now, to get at these cheeks, our oxygen on the hydroxide must do a little thing called hybridize its orbitals. Let me show you what it's working with. Here are its available orbitals for bonding. It's got one s orbital and three p orbitals. You can see how penetrating the cheeks might be difficult with its s orbital as it's not very long and mostly confined near the atom. Now watch what happens to the shape of the orbital when we mix one fourth of an s orbital with three fourths of a p orbital. Kabam! We get an orbital with a nice long girthy lobe and a little ball at the base, perfect for clapping some orbital cheeks. Editors note, this isn't exactly why the oxygen on the hydroxide hybridizes its orbitals. It does so for the same reason anything happens in chemistry, because it is lower in energy. Also, it would hybridize when it becomes hydroxide. Getting back to the reaction, things are heating up as our hydroxide whips out its fully occupied sp3 orbital. Coming in from the back side of the carbon, lobe fully extended, heading straight for the antibonding orbital, the head of our hydroxide's sp3 begins to penetrate the antibonding orbital of the carbon. Scientists call this a backside attack. As this happens, the bonds carbon has with the hydrogens spread apart to allow the hydroxide to come on in. Scientists refer to this as when the carbon spreads them. As the hydroxide penetrates deeper into the antibond, the bromine, which was once in a happy bond with the carbon, now decides it's time to pack up and leave. As it exits, the transition state for this molecule is formed, with hydroxide coming in from the back and bromine leaving from the front. As bromine leaves and breaks its bond with carbon, the bonds carbon has with the hydrogen swing back to take advantage of the new space, and hydroxide cements its bond with the carbon. This yields the new molecule, ethanol, which is coincidentally what humans use to break bonds of their own. The following is a short theatrical rendition of this reaction. Oh, hydroxide, you're such a big, strong nucleophile. You know I am, baby. Now let me get at that positively charged antibond. So that's what happens when hydroxide backside attacks a bromoethane molecule. We end up with ethanol and a bromide ion. If this video helped you, feel free to leave a like. If you're all hot and sweaty for more science videos, check out our playlists on the channel. And as always, let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. This is Chemistry Personified, and remember, it tends to work faster if it's hot and wet.